In part 3 of our series on learning to play Osprey Game Zona Alpha, we are going to cover the mechanics. Zona Alpha consists of turns, with the player who wins initiative deciding who goes first. The way initiative is determined is that each player will roll a d10. The players will see what number they rolled, and then subtract the number of models that are currently pinned from the score. We will explain pinning a little bit later. The player with the highest result, after the modifiers, decides who activates first. This means the winner can decide to go first, or let the opponent go first if they think that would help. Players will then alternate activating one unit at a time, resolving all of movement and combat until every unit in both forces has activated. No unit may be activated more than once per turn. Each unit can activate one time per game. When activated, a unit can perform one, two, or three actions, depending on the model's combat experience. Once every available unit has activated, the game turn ends and a new initiative roll is made. The game ends when one side is killed off, all the scenario objectives are completed, or the number of rounds allowed for the scenario are done. As we mentioned in the previous video, there are three levels of combat experience, Rookie, Hardened, and Veteran. Rookies are capable of one action per activation, they start with no skills and only one equipment slot. Hardened members of your team have two actions per activation. They have one skill and two equipment slots. At the top end, there are the veterans. This is normally your leader and maybe some other select members of your squad. They are capable of three actions per activation. They have two skills and three equipment slots. Now let's discuss how to take actions. A player can select any one of their models to perform various actions as long as that model has not gone already that turn or is not out of action. There are 12 actions that a model can take. All of them cost one action to take except for the alert action and we'll discuss that later. Complex actions such as defusing a bomb or repairing a generator, hacking a computer, or let's say harvesting crystals generally require multiple actions, potentially more than your model can exercise in one turn and have a related skill check associated with them. The aim action can be used immediately prior to a ranged or melee combat attack action. It adds a plus one bonus to the model's combat ability in the subsequent attack action and a plus one bonus to a weapon damage if the attack was successful. An aim action can be used when firing into melee, but the shooter loses the plus one bonus to combat ability and weapon damage. However, the shooter is able to select their target and roll as normal without the possibility of hitting a friendly model or unit. The alert action. This is a special one, as this one costs two actions. In other games, this is normally known as Overwatch. Your unit can take one action and hold it in reserve, so use it after their turn, and this costs two activation points. They can use this to interrupt any of their opposing player's actions. For example, move, shoot, aim, even prep and throw a grenade. So for example, if this guy does a move to come around, and this guy's on alert, aka Overwatch, at any point in this move, the controlling player can now say, I want to execute my alert action and shoot. Attack action. One ranged or melee attack. For the ranged attack, the model can fire a ranged weapon one time at any enemy unit. For a melee attack, the model can make one melee attack at one enemy model currently in base-to-base -base contact. So, like that. We will discuss ranged and melee attacks in their own videos. Prepping and throwing a grenade. This is a special kind of attack that will be covered in part seven of our video series on its own under the indirect fire rules. For example, this allows an individual to arm up their grenade and throw it at a target that they don't have line of sight with. And we'll cover those special rules later. Move action. The move action will get its own video to discuss movement, but a model or unit moves up to its movement stat in inches. Movement does not have to be in a straight line, and the model is not required to move the full amount. Models may move up or down in a level and multi-level terrain via slope, stairs, or ladder at their normal unmodified distance. Climb. 
Certain complex terrain features will affect a unit's movement and require the unit to expend additional actions and movement to go around, through, which isn't going to happen in the case of this wall, or over. This will happen when you run into the sides of buildings, something like this blast wall, or say a cliff face, so any vertical surface. The climb action does not have to be used on the slope of a hill or stairs and ladders. The jump action. There are going to be times when you are moving your model and you're going to encounter a chasm or some form of gap along the horizontal surface of movement. And that will require you to execute a jump to get to the other side. That will be covered more specifically in our movement video. The rally action. Now, rallying allows you to move one pinned counter, in this case I'm using a Necromunda token, that was put on the model from an earlier round of combat. Removal is automatic at one action per counter and does not require that you have to make a will check. The recover action. Recovery is similar to rally. This is essentially standing up and getting your bearings. If one of your models falls or gets knocked around by some type of game event, the model can use this action to get back up after being knocked prone. I will note that there are actually no rules regarding falling in this game, so that might be something you have to homebrew, but we'll talk about that in the movement video. The reload action. This action only applies to certain ranged weapons or when certain combat conditions are met, such as unload. This action allows the weapon to be put back into service after use. For example, if this individual decided to take his machine gun and just open up full auto on this guy, he'd have to reload later. Or if you're using some form of grenade or rocket launcher that had that rule on it. Inspect. This action is used when a model is in line of sight and within 12 inches of a suspect location such as a zone hotspot or mission objective which I'm representing with these crystals. This action allows the player to add or subtract one from the zone hostile table roll for that particular location during this turn. This only applies if the action is taken in the same turn prior to the crew engaging that location. So this individual would inspect it and then someone in the crew could activate this hotspot or zone objective and trigger the monsters but it has to be done before you do the triggering to get the bonus. Use item or interact with item action. This is a catch-all action that covers a variety of different events. This action you use to search a train item, toss a bolt at a hotspot to activate it when you're farther away, apply a medkit to an ally, free a prisoner, uh, hack into this computer, harvest these crystals, so on. It's your basic all-purpose action. Now let's discuss complex tasks and skill checks. These represent difficult or complicated situations that require the character to spend a number of actions as well as utilizing their will stat. Beyond the drama developed by engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat or gunfights, the need to execute complex actions on the board related to the goals of the mission adds another layer of drama to the game and the specifics are left to the player's imagination and the requirements of the scenario. Some examples of complex actions include hacking a computer terminal, uh, you know, chipping off pieces of this crystal and bringing them back, or dealing with this IED. Well, when you're doing an IED, you can just use a garbage pile if you want. They look the same. These situations require a model to spend between one and three actions, as well as make an initial one-time D10 skill check. In this case, he failed miserably, depending on a combination of modifiers. And it'll be, that roll will be made against the will stat. The skill check roll is a free action, so when I made that roll, that didn't count against my total actions for that round. For a complex task, the model must first be in base-to-base -base contact with the object or the terrain item, so in our case this computer console. It must then make a successful skill check to start the task, 
In case of four without modifiers, that would pass. To start the task, this skill check is a single d10 roll made against the model's will stat and does not cost an action. Complex tasks have difficulty ratings. Most often, this is a zero, so that it wouldn't affect any modifier on your roll, and the skill check roll is made on the model's straight will stat. However, more complicated jobs might have a difficulty rating of 1, 2, or even 3. This value is a penalty to the model's will stat. So let's use the example of this model, moving up to this IED to disarm it. We'll say the IED has a difficulty of 2, which will require 2 actions and a negative 2 skill check. Now keep in mind that the model might have special gear or might have some special skills that would modify this really bad skill check roll. Again, the skill check roll is free and does not require an action in itself. Once a successful roll has been made, the model may then expend actions to accomplish the task. When actions are spent on complex tasks, they do not have to be performed all at once and can be banked. Make a note on the model's stat sheet or use some type of token to mark the number of actions spent. While the actions can be rolled over from turn to turn, they must be spent by the initiating model. Should that model move away from the task area, be injured or killed, a, uni a new unit may attempt the task, but it must start over and roll a successful skill check. So using our example, this model would make a move action and approach the IED. If the IED is difficulty 2, and this is, let's just say, a hardened, he only has one action left. So what he can do is say, I want to use this action to disarm this IED. At the start of the next round, he'd use another action, giving him the 2. He'd do his rolls and such. Now, if uh, before he can execute that section action to complete the disarmament of the IED, IED a model comes up and engages them in hand-to-hand -hand combat, shoots them, takes them out of action, that interrupts the whole process and you have to start all over again. Now some skill checks may be restricted only to those models with specific skills or equipment. For example, mechanical repairs or let's say hacking are much easier for a technician while IED removal might be a little bit less nerve-wracking for a demolition and ordnance expert. Regardless of how you want to play it in Zona Alpha, special abilities make characters better at certain skills and tasks than other models. Zona Alpha is designed to be a skirmish game with players controlling a squad of individual soldiers, specialists, and characters. However, there may be an occasion where a unit is actually composed of multiple models. In this case, the squad adhesion and common action rules will apply. Because the squad is trained to act as a team, they must stay together and engage in identical actions when activated. Now, this normally applies to the zone hostiles that move in groups and swarms. So I have a range of WizKids models and these will just fill in for like my mutant zombies and dogs. Brian likes to use attack penguins. Squad cohesion means models in a multi-model unit cannot be further than one inch apart from at least one other model within the unit. Think of this like a chain rather than a clump. So a skirmish line is fine. Common actions require all models in the unit undertake the same action together. For example, they must move, shoot, and attack close combat together. In addition, when attacking, all models concentrate their attacks on the same target. A majority of the time, the only multiple model units are the zone hostiles, as I discussed. Uh, Essentially, treat the multi-model unit as a single model with more firepower and wounds than a single model. So, for example, if this individual is here and some zone hostiles came out, they would have to all move towards him and attack him. You can't have a situation of where the swarm comes out and attacks both individuals. Remember, think of it as one model. They'll attack one individual. And remember, this guy can shoot without having to worry about hitting his buddy. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of Learn to Play Zona Alpha, and we'll see you next time.